We've looked at a few ways of using the Sputnik Modular 5-step sequencer. Now let's look at an unconventional use for the module. Thanks to the versatile design of the module, we can get a number of different audio sources from the 5-step. The built-in clock outputs a square wave with pulse width modulation, as well as a ramp wave. But the sequences themselves can operate as complex pulse waves, and with some control, can yield some interesting results. Let's start with the built-in clock or pulser. We can patch out from the pulser output and hear the range of frequencies available by experimenting with the time knob. Notice that one function we generally see on oscillators, the one volt per octave standard CV input, is not present here. And unlike the average coarse tuning knob, the time knob changes the pitch from high to low, fast clock pulses to slow pulses. This means if we patch a CV signal to the time CV input, the pitch will track down rather than up from the current tuning, and it will not track in a common volt per octave ratio. This may seem like an undesirable result, but it can actually yield useful musical passages. Because the time input does not track a standard range, we can get an atonal sequence from an otherwise tuned, scale quantized passage. Let's try sending one sequence from the Korg SQ1 to the Sputnik oscillator the same sequence to the pulsar time input. Notice that the oscillator tracks its sequence above its current tuning in a 5 octave range, while the 5 step tracks down from its current tuning in a murky scale, with a range of about 5 volts per octave below by comparison. This contrary motion in the resulting sequences can be very musical, especially with a bit of manipulation of the voltages. We can change the shape and timbre of the output square pulse wave by altering the length knob or sending signal to the length CV input, effectively controlling and modulating the pulse width of the square wave. We can also use the ramp wave output to get another timbre to mix with our square wave signal. Things get interesting when we start incorporating the sequences on the left side of the module for use as oscillators as well. Remember, oscillators send repeated changes in voltage, with the rate of those changes affecting the perceived pitch of the tone. The sequencer sends changes in voltage per step. So with some finessing of the sequences, we can get a kind of multiplexed series of pulses of different voltages. By pushing the rate of repetition of those sequences into the audio range, the voltages will change at the rate of an oscillator wave shape, and should result in a tone. Plug the output from row A to a VCA or mixer. Now turn a few of the steps up to 100% and a few down. You should hear a square wave-like tone being generated. By changing the voltage levels on the different steps in the sequence, the timbre of the tone can be altered. Turning off the stage select switches one by one reveal certain subharmonic relatives to the pulsar tuning. We can also use the stage select buttons to hop between different divisions of stages. To take this combination of pseudo-oscillators to another level, the address input can be used to trigger and cycle between sequence stages, detaching its tuning from the clock oscillator. We can use a looping function generator, like channels 1 or 4 on maths, to repeatedly cycle through the sequence, even using the attenuverters to limit how many stages cycle at a time. Then we can modulate maths to cycle at different rates by sending our original sequence to the both input, generating different tunings from the five step. The best thing about this setup is that nothing is in tune. This microtonal contrapuntal result 
is perfect for running through mutable instruments warps for evolving atonal drones, as well as crunchy techno phrases. Most importantly, we're starting to think about certain modules in different ways, beyond names and labels, to what is at the heart of the modular system, voltage. Thanks for watching and as always, please like, follow and subscribe.